Welcome to English Country Life. This is the July episode of our series, The Chicken Year, where we follow through everything we do to keep our chickens as healthy as possible as the year progresses. So come and join us for July. Welcome, my name is Fiona and this is one of Marshmallow's chicks and he is now five weeks old and I say he because we can now tell that he is a little cockerel and what we're going to be covering first in this episode is actually separating hens from cockerels, how you can tell which are which if you hatch your own chicks. We're going to be looking at cider vinegar because we do add it to our water we're going to look at how much we add and when we add it. We're also going to be looking at Marshmallow because she's showing, showing signs of going back to the main coop and making her chicks independent. So we're going to be looking at the signs to look for and when that might happen. And finally we're coming into the hottest months of the year here on the small holding. So we're going to be looking at ways to help you keep your chickens cool. This is one of Marshmallow's chicks and at five weeks old we can tell he is a male. Now there's a few giveaways that actually tell us that he's not a female, he is a male. The first thing is he's got very thick legs and when he walks, he walks in a very upright way so his centre of gravity is different to the young hens. He's also got really quite defined little wattles underneath his chin. And I hope you can see that. And he's also got the start of quite a pronounced comb. Now to us it doesn't matter until they reach maturity, so when they're quite a lot older, because we grow all our chicks, whether male or female, to an older age. And we do have a video to explain why we do that and what we're actually trying to achieve. But for now, I'm going to let this little man down and roam with his brothers and sisters. Just to show you the contrast, this young lady is most likely going to be a hen. She walks with her body in a very horizontal way, so she holds herself like a hen. She's got quite delicate legs, whereas the other chick we looked at had very thick legs, and she's got no wattles or comb to speak of. In this section I did promise we'd be talking about cider vinegar and this is ours and we do actually make it ourselves. So we make cider from our apple cheese and then we add a mother of vinegar to turn it into vinegar. But we add this to the chicken drinkers for the first four or five weeks when we've got chicks lives and we find we actually have less pacey belt. We do have a little bit but far less than we would otherwise and it's one tablespoon per gallon of water and I normally mix in a bucket and then fill the drinkers from the bucket. But a word of warning, cider vinegar solutions should only ever be put in plastic drinkers, never in galvanised drinkers. The acid in the cider vinegar does react with the galvanisation and it can actually bring some of that galvanisation out into the water so it's a really bad idea. Only plastic drinkers if you're going to use this. So food, we've been asked a lot as well about what we feed our flock given we've got multiple ages. So we, here we've got Marshmallow's chicks and over to my right we've got Frankie with her chicks which are even younger. But we also have laying hens in the flock. Now laying hens need a lot of calcium but if you feed calcium food types to chicks it can actually damage their kidneys and liver. So the best thing to do is feed to the youngest in the flock. There's two types of food that we give our youngsters. We like to give them in the coop marriages chick crumb. Now the reason for that is it's medicated and the chick crumb is tiny so when the, the chicks first come out of the egg this is the best thing that we can possibly give them. It gives them a great boost at the start of their lives. As soon as they start roaming out with a flock, the outdoor feeders, they have what's called a micro pellet. Now this only appears to be available in the UK and these are tiny tiny pellets which are small enough for the chicks to digest and as you can see Frankie's here with her chicks and they really love it. They take it from a hand no problem at all. They'll still have the chick crumb in their coops at night. 
Now if you can't get that, chick crumb is absolutely fine. At four weeks, we would normally switch the, the flock over to growers pellets, which again is low in calcium. But we need the youngest chicks to be four weeks before we do that because growers pellets are actually quite large. And these tiny chicks here, for example, jelly beans and even Frankie's can't possibly consume a pellet as large as a growers pellet. Now growers pellets are the same size as layers pellets and you're probably asking yourself okay but what about your egg layers because if you don't give some kind of calcium supplement they're not going to be able to lay strong eggs and you'd be absolutely right. So what we do is we provide coarse oyster shell supplements around the property. A coarse oyster shell is too big for a chick to consume so it's perfect. They can't possibly eat it so they won't be damaging their kidneys and livers but our laying chickens will get everything that they need. And this is coarse oyster shell so as you can see the flakes are quite large and far too large for a small chick to consume and that means only egg laying hens will eat it and will access it and this is enough to give them that calcium supplement so that they can lay strong healthy eggs. in the shade are our adult hens with no chicks so these are our hens which aren't broody on the right hand side we've got licorice then lollipop and just walking towards us here this is marshmallow now you might be thinking but marshmallow's got chicks and this is the thing she's no longer hanging out with the chicks she has no interest in them whatsoever during the day she is hanging around with the other hens which don't have chicks so we're seeing signs that she's going to want to leave her chicks to be independent and move back to the main coop. So what are the signs that we're looking for with Marshmallow wanting to go back to the main coop? Well here are her chicks and it's just before dusk and they've actually taken themselves to bed and as you can see Marshmallow's not with them. She does keep coming and looking inside the coop, but changes her mind quite quickly and moves on. And where does she go to from there? Well, there's a lot of running down the field towards the main coop, but she's still quite hesitant, as you can see. And lo and behold, she changes her mind and goes back towards the coop where her chicks are. Eventually she'll make up her mind and select the main coop, but this will go on for two or three nights. But she won't return to her chicks now and the chicks are essentially completely independent from their brood hen. July, August and September are going to be the hottest months for us here on the small holding and actually keeping the chickens cool is something which we have to think about. Now our Buff Warpington chickens are our main breed here and they're very heavily feathered and if we don't provide them some method of keeping cool they can go into a heat molt and actually shed some of their feathers. So what do we do? Well there's various options that we use. The first is natural shade. We have our chickens roaming in our orchard and this is our largest cherry tree and although actually it's not very productive because it's far too high for us to gather the cherries from it, the chickens love it. It's got the biggest canopy and as you can see is their favourite hangout. We've got the Well Summers and the Crested Cream Leg Bars here. We've got the Buff Orpington broody hens and their chicks too and they're loving just hanging out in the shade. But if you don't have the benefit of this natural shade, what are your options? If natural shade isn't an option for you, here's another alternative and it might look quite sophisticated but actually it's made from things which otherwise would have been thrown away. It's a shade area which is covering the sand bath for the chickens and it's just an old tractor tire filled with builder sand. But the shade is made from the old stand from my swing seat and the swing seat had started to rot out. It was so old, the feet had started to rot with so much rain over the years. So we just cut the feet off and the roof is made from wriggly tin, which is left over from re-roofing one of our barns. Now clearly I appreciate not everyone's got an old swing seat lying around or old roofing, roofing sheets from re-roofing a barn, but you may have other things lying around which you could adapt to make shade areas. But if you want a simpler design, let me show you something that might work for you. 
This is our simplest shelter and as you can see marshmallows chicks are inside making good use of it. If you think about a cube it's got six sides. Now this shelter you only have four sides on it so you leave two of them open. One becomes the base and one is the opening at the front for the chicks and the chickens to get in and out. But there's three uprights and a roof and that's all you need. It doesn't need to be any more complicated so this format can easily be reproduced by most people. So what other tricks do we use to keep the chickens cool? Well if we've got a broody hen who's stuck in a coop, she sat on a nest for 23 hours a day and it's very very hot weather, there's a couple of things we'll do to help her out. The first is we've got these little fans which are incredibly quiet so there's no noise to disturb the chickens. That's turned on, I don't even know if you can hear those blades moving. But you'll also notice that the blades are fully enclosed so there's no risk of any feathers getting caught in those blades and this is really really useful. We try and mount it as high as possible in the coop so it keeps the air circulating but it's away from them so it's not a danger to any chicks which hatch. It's a really useful bit of kit. What else do we do? Well you might be wondering why I've got a pot bottle here and this is filled with water which I've just stuck in the freezer and essentially I've made a giant popsicle. Now I will wrap this in an old towel and then I'll pop that in the coop. And you might have seen me do this trick in winter with hot water bottles to add heat to the coop. Well this is the same principle, so this is basically something very very cold because it's wrapped in a towel it means that the chickens actually won't sit on it and won't, their feathers won't stick to it either if it's very very cold. But because it's wrapped in a towel it means it takes longer for it to defrost. So it's much much better for the coop and you'd be surprised at how much it actually lowers the temperature inside. And if you want to lower the temperature even more just make a lot of them. But these bottles have another purpose because what I do with some of them is I'll cut the top off and that gives me a giant popsicle and that popsicle can then be added into the drinkers which keeps the drinking water very very cold too. So old pot bottles really useful. That's July in our chicken calendar. I hope you found that information really useful. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give me a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you've got a question for me, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But for now, thanks for watching and it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Frankie and her chicks.